Welcome to our video. Hopefully by the end of this you'll have a much better understanding of carbamazole and its role in hypothyroidism. This video was made by Alejandro, Chris, Suman, Pippa, Vishva and Brad. Before we introduce carbimazole, we need an understanding of what carbimazole treats, hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is a condition where the thyroid gland is overactive and produces too many thyroid hormones, T3 and T4. It leads to symptoms of weight loss, mood swings, heart palpitations, difficulty sleeping, irritability, fatigue, excessive sweating or a swelling in your neck. If untreated, it may become life-threatening when these symptoms become more severe. Graves' disease is the most common form of hypothyroidism in the Western world, with 20 and 100,000 people being diagnosed with the condition every year. It occurs more often in younger populations and women since it's an autoimmune disease. Women are 10 times more likely to have it than men. The major thyroid hormones T3 and T4 are formed in the following pathway. Iodine is absorbed and transported to the thyroid tissue called follicular cells. In the follicular cells, the iodine becomes oxidized by TPO, or thyroid peroxidase enzyme, to form iodide. This is done with the use of H2O2. TPO is a heme-containing enzyme, which catalyzes the first two steps of the thyroid hormone synthesis process. TPO begins with iron in the oxidation state 3, which becomes oxidized to the oxidation state 4. This oxidation reaction occurs due to the addition of H2O2. The oxidized iron now binds to the iodide ion which has entered the thyroid. The iodide binds to tyrosyl residues coming off the thyroglobulin protein or Tg to produce MIT, monoiodotyrosine, and DIT, diiodotyrosine. One MIT and one DIT molecule combine to form T3. Two DIT molecules combine to form T4. From this pathway we can see what an important effect iodine has. Therefore, hypothyroidism can be caused by insufficient or excess iodine in the body. This is carbimazole. It's an oral drug used to treat hypothyroidism and Graves' disease. It's an amidazole antithyroid agent. The first paper introducing carbimazole was published in 1953, where it was called neomercazole, since it was developed as a prodrug of mercazole, which is more commonly and modernly known as methimazole. Methimazole was first written about in 1949. The change in structure between the two is believed to make carbimazole less toxic and cause less side effects, especially gastrointestinal side effects. In carbimazole, a carbethoxy group blocks the active group. Carbimazole can be metabolized into methimazole within 15 to 30 minutes in the body, with peak methimazole plasma concentration happening one hour after orally taking carbimazole. Carbimazole is metabolized in plasma by hydrolysis and enzymatic decarboxylation. Carbimazole isn't approved for use in many countries around the world, including major countries such as the USA, where instead methimazole is used. Carbimazole is 80 to 85% protein bound in plasma, while methimazole's protein binding is quite negligible. Both carbimazole and methimazole fit Lipinski's rule of five, which is why they're both used as oral drugs. Carbimazole has three hydrogen bond acceptors, zero hydrogen bond donors, a molecular mass of 186.2 daltons, a log P of 0 0.4. Methimazole has one hydrogen bond acceptor, one hydrogen bond donor, a molecular mass of 114.2, and a log P of 0 0.75. The structure of active methimazole shows potential for disulfide bonds and hydrogen bonding. Here's the method of synthesis for carbimazole, the carbine route, a one-pot synthesis. Ethyl chloroformate is added to one methyl amidazole via syringe at zero degrees. With distilled dried THF acting as a catalyst. The mixture is stirred for three hours and then cooled to zero degrees. The product formed is amidazolium salts. Triethylamine is added to the amidazolium salts produced in the first step. The solution is then allowed to reach room temperature around 24 degrees and is stirred for three hours to produce N-heterocyclic carbenes, or NHC. Sulfur powder is added to NHC after being stirred. The mixture is then stirred for 24 hours, followed by evaporation of the solvent under reduced pressure. The result is a grey solid being left behind. The compound is extracted from the grey solid with chloroform and filtered through cellite, forming a white solid from this filtrate. 
Lastly, the white solid is purified by column chromatography with ethyl acetate and petroleum ether to produce a prodrug carbimazole. Like we've said, carbimazole itself is an amidazole antithyroid agent. It's known as a prodrug as the compound is not active unless metabolized in the body to the active form methimazole. In the active form, the drug prevents thyroid peroxidase, TPO, from functioning. This occurs by preventing the coupling and iodination of tyrosine residues on thyroglobulin, the glycoproteins produced by follicular cells of the thyroid. Without this coupling, MIT and DIT formation cannot occur, and subsequently, T3 and T4 hormones cannot be formed. The active drug methimazole acts as the preferential substrate for TPO, which results in it being iodinated instead of the thyroglobulin tyrosyl residue. The drug accumulates in the thyroid tissue, causing a reduction in hormonogenesis and complete inhibition of thyroid hormone synthesis. This is all possible due to the occurrence of drug-protein interactions between the drug and certain amino acid side chains. The crystal structure of TPO is not yet known. However, due to the high homologies of the amino acid sequence within the mammalian peroxidases and their similar functional properties, the binding sites are thought to be quite similar. As LPO or lactoperoxidase has shown to have a similar role in the process of iodination, this indicates that the two enzymes have a similar catalytic action. X-ray structures have shown that methimazole can enter the substrate binding channel in two opposing orientations, but once it reaches the distal heme pocket, the orientation is fixed. The interactions within LPO are as follows. The sulfur on the methimazole forms contacts with the heme ion, glutamine 105 and histidine 109. The methyl group carbon forms van der Waal forces with histidine 109, glutamic acid 258 and leucine 262. The carbons within the ring interact with arginine 255 and glutamic acid 258. In the case of TPO, similar interaction would probably occur due to the conservativity of the enzymes, such as the sulfur on the methimazole would form contacts with the heme ion, glutamine 196 and histidine 200. The methyl group carbon would form van der Waal contacts with the histidine 200. The carbons within the ring would interact with arginine 357. When this occurs in the body, it leads to a depletion in the level of activity of the enzymes, thus preventing hypothyroidism from occurring. Carbimazole's structure allows the compound to be in either a keto or enol form due to tautomerism. Carbimazole exists as the thione tautomer, which suggests that it may be the stable form of the compound. The stability may prevent the compound from undergoing spontaneous oxidation to the corresponding disulfide compound, which could explain the high antithyroid activity. With drugs such as carbimazole, the side effects of the active drug are mainly dose-related. Therefore, each patient is affected differently depending on their dosage. Only around 5% of antithyroid drug users are affected by the side effects. The most common side effect amongst patients is drug rash, which is due to an allergic reaction to the drug. Other minor side effects include arthralgia, which is a pain in the joints, gastrointestinal complaints, and changes in taste and smell. More severe but also rare side effects include a granulocytosis, depletion in white blood cell count, and hepatotoxicity. An off-target effect of carbimazole is that it acts as an inhibitor to cytochrome P450-19A1, which means that it prevents the normal function of catalyzing the formation of aromatic C18 estrogens from C19 androgens through an unknown mechanism. Thanks for watching our video. Hopefully you now understand hypothyroidism and Graves' disease, how thyroid hormones are synthesized, the history and properties of carbimazole, the synthesis of carbimazole, and finally how carbimazole treats hypothyroidism, including the active site, structure-activity relationship, and side effects. Thanks!